Hey what is going on guys, Max Settings here and welcome back to another review. So in today's review we are going to be taking a look at the ZMF Autor Teak. This is one of the couple dynamic headphones that ZMF makes and it has some very unique properties that we will talk about. So getting things started with basic specs as always, uh, these headphones are going to cost you anywhere from $1,500 to maybe $1,800, dollars uh, depending on which wood option you have. These particular ones are the teak wood, which originally retailed at $1,600. They use a biocellulose dynamic driver with an impedance of 300 ohms and a sensitivity of 98 dB per milliwatt. And the weight is going to be 500 to 600 ish grams, depending on your wood choice. The wood is going to affect the the, uh, the weight of these headphones. So getting things started off with the build, uh, the build is pretty typical ZMF. You have very beautifully made uh, wood cups, and like I already mentioned, this is the teak wood, so uh, other woods are obviously going to look different. And every pair has a unique grain because wood is variable. You can see this side is different looking from this side. You can see them side by side. And I don't know why on camera one side looks so much darker than the other one, because in real life they look the exact same shade. I guess it's just like the way that the light hits depending on the way you tilt it like that. But anyway, uh, back on topic. So up top you have leather uh, headband with a little bit of foam there, which doesn't make really too much sense why there's foam because there's a comfort strap. So you have a uh, leather comfort strap. This has a ZMF embossed in it uh, a little bit and also a ZMF embossed on there and a right there for uh, Otor. And then metal here, metal adjustment rod for adjusting the height of the headphone, metal yoke, wood cups with the, the venting grills, and the flower-shaped uh, pattern here for the grill since these are an open back headphone. And the pads are gonna vary. There's, there's two stock pads that come with the Otor, both of which are perforated leather. But there are, uh, but uh, as with all ZMF headphones, there are many pad options that you can add on uh, afterwards. So there are lots of different pads you can try on these for different sound. And on the bottom, you will find two uh, mini four-pin XLRs, uh, just like an Odyssey headphone. So that is the build on the ZMF Otor. And as for comfort, the Otor is going to probably be a mixed bag for for some people i find it decently comfortable uh, it's not too clampy uh, good nice headband with nice suspension strap and nice soft pads they're not the deepest pads in the world so i can definitely see people's ears uh, hitting inside the pads but the 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 area where these are going to bother people are the weight especially if you get a heavier wood something like blackwood or coco bolo uh, those are going to be quite heavy, uh, 600 grams if not even pushing that. So the weight's going to get to some people, but overall the everything else to do with the comfort is good and they don't bother me too, too much. And as for cables, the stock cable that the Otor comes with is not good at all. I showed this off in the, the LCD2 review. Uh, this is the same stock cable that Odyssey used to use. This just janky uh, ribbon cable, very generic cable with the uh, mini four pin XLR plugs uh, right there. So yeah, this cable is not really deserving of a $1,500 to $1,900 pair of headphones. Interestingly, the quarter inch jack, the tip is gold, but the, the rest of it, the rings are silver. That's kind of strange. So yeah, this I've not even unwrapped this cable. Uh, so yeah, that's just not a good stock cable. Um, for $60 extra, you can get this balanced one that is kind of rubbery and like a little bit stiff, but this is a much better cable than the stock cable. And I would definitely recommend picking this up for the additional $60, especially if you have an amp with balance. If not, you'll have to get an adapter. But I wish this cable in quarter inch was the stock cable because this would be an acceptable stock cable. This cable is not too bad. I don't like 
the, the cable that the Otor comes with. And as for power, the Otor is decently hard to drive. It's nothing, nothing insane at all. It's not like an HE6 or uh, some of the higher end Odyssey headphones, but it definitely takes a little bit of power, 300 ohms at 98 dB per milliwatt. So a decent amount of power to get going, but nothing too, too crazy. And you should be fine on anything decently powerful like an Atom or a Magni or something like that. And before we jump into the sound, we have to talk about the, the two pads that the Otor comes with. So on it right now are the Icon pads because the Otor is the open back uh, icon or the icon is the closed back Otor, however you want to look at it. And these pads are the, the Otor pads, the stock uh, perforated leather Otor pads. And the, the Icon pads have a smaller opening than the Otor pad does. So we're going to talk about the sound a little more generally because uh, the pad changes will obviously affect it. And if you get the other pads like the suede's or something, it is going to uh, change the sound e even more. So starting off with the FR, and one thing I want to mention from the beginning is the, the differences between the pads is more than I think the, the ears graph shows. I think the ears graph doesn't show the difference between the pads uh, as well as it actually sounds. So the bass extends really well. This is another dynamic headphone with the, the planar uh, bass extension, much like the HD800 here or the Focal Lex was. It's not perfectly flat. There's, it's a, definitely elevated a little bit, uh, 2 or 3 dB or so. It has a very light curve to it. It's not totally flat where if you overlaid this with an LCD, the LCD would be lower and flatter bass response. But similarly to an Odyssey, uh, by the time you hit around that 1.5K mark, that your mids start to roll down a little bit. And they roll down and you have a little bit of a dip there of around 3.5K that dips down 3 or 4 dB or so. And after that, you have a little bit of recession in your your rest of your upper or like the beginning part of your upper mids that stays down recessed a little bit and then after that the the treble comes back up and it finishes off with a more inline treble that's more in line of where the bass was so these have a technically mildly v-shaped signature although it's more of just recessed mids and the treble and the bass are kind of more in line so your upper treble and your your bass are just kind of there and just a little bit of just just a little bit of a recession in the mids that's not too too bad so as for the difference between the pads I, I did spend most of my time with the icon pads on it because from initial impressions I liked the icon pads more because the icon pads seem to add a little bit more to the upper treble because I think the upper treble with the Otor pads is a little bit lower I don't think it's actually quite in line with the bass. I think it's recessed a little bit, uh, kind of like what an Odyssey does where you have that flat bass dipped mids and the treble comes back up at the end, but it's not in line with the with where the bass was or it's still a little bit recessed. That's what I think uh, the Otor sounds like with the, the Otor pads. And the Icon pads make uh, give that upper treble just a little bit more. So initially, I was really drawn to the Icon pads because, as I mentioned in the LC2 review, I'm not a massive fan of the Odyssey uh, sound signature. However, when I was doing my, my final listenings, I went back to the Otor pads, and I think I actually now prefer the Otor pads. While the Icon pads do give you more treble, the Otor pads take a little bit off that upper treble, but the mid-range is a lot smoother. With the icon pads, the mids seem a lot more uneven and kind of kind of weird and peaky. With the Otor pads, it seems a lot smoother and a lot cleaner, which is kind of strange because the, the ears graph doesn't show it, like I mentioned, because the ears is not an accurate measuring device, which is why you always listen and don't go completely off of graphs of really inaccurate measuring devices. So that is the, the general FR. I think I would definitely actually stick with the Otor pads, but try them both, see what you like. Uh, oop, that's just uh, my two cents on that. Now, as for detail, I don't think that any uh, ZMF headphone, maybe except the Verite, but I need more time with the Verite, 
is particularly detailed for its price point, but there's another reason why you buy a, a ZMF. So for this thing's price point, even used is way behind HD800 detail. Uh, I don't even think it necessarily even competes with the Alex. I don't have the Alex here anymore, but I just, just don't think it has quite that level of, of detail. It might be close to Alex, but it's, it's um, not the most detailed thing for the price point. Now, the detail is not bad. It's not an unacceptable uh, level of, of uh, detail for its price point. It definitely has enough detail where you're not like, oh, this thing does no detail at all. It has detail, but I just don't think it's quite there for a fifteen to eighteen hundred dollar price point. But the thing you buy ZMFs for, in my opinion, is the ZMF house sound, which is a very warm and kind of echoey, reverby sound signature. Now, when when we reviewed the the Meze Noirs, I mentioned that those had pretty crazy reverb and that was one of the things I didn't like about it. The the ZMFs have a reverb also, but it's much more controlled and it's like almost as meant as part of the tuning in my opinion. I think he when he does the the tuning of them, he factors in the, the reverb and the resonance of the wood into the sound. Where on the Mezes that was just a, a, a side product of it being a wood back. So ZMFs have this very unique resonance sound with with the the wood and you listen to to bass and uh even like piano and there's just this really interesting reverby kind of echo to it where like the zmfs almost sound like what a lot of people say tubes do to, to certain headphones like hd 600 gives you this cool warmth and resonance that's like what the otor is like by default it just has this really neat unique sound that's really fun and enjoyable to listen to with this cool resonance sound. You really have to try it and experience it. Some people are going to like it, some people aren't. But I really enjoy this kind of unique sound that the, the ZMF headphones give, particularly, uh, particularly the Otor. And now, as for soundstage, the Otor is quite wide. It has very good soundstage. Uh, imaging is not quite there. It's, it doesn't image poorly. But it's not the the most uh, well imaging thing out there by any means. The HD 800 certainly out images it, as does the the HE6. But imaging is there, but or is acceptable, but very nice wide sound stage. And then as for timbre, it is fairly natural. It is one of the better timbres of uh, any headphone out there. It's Still not quite there with the 600 series, but it still sounds uh, pretty natural. Kind of, I don't even know how I would describe it. It's not overly metallic or plasticky or anything. It has a very natural, natural timbre. I'm not going to complain about the timbre on them at all. So that is pretty much the the sound on the ZMF. So the the Otor kind of reminds me like if you made an Odyssey, but with a dynamic driver in warmer. It's not as dipped out in the mids as the LCD2, but I have a, an LCD4 right now, and that thing's not nearly as dipped as the 2 was. So this has less dipped mids, but that same very nice bass extension, but this is a little warmer because Odyssey bass is flat, with a little bit of recessed mids and that very slightly or inline upper treble region. So these are kind of like the Odyssey target but for whatever reason, I actually really like these, even though they're kind of that Odyssey target, but it's just not as extreme. And they have that really cool uh, reverb resonance. And because of that, the Otor is probably the most chill headphone I've ever listened to. This headphone is just so nice for sitting back and relaxing because it's very tame, very nice, warm. You know, trebles does not, doesn't get in your face at all. And it's just so chill and so fun to listen to. And I don't know, some headphones, when I'm listening to them, they, I don't know, if I'm trying to do something else, they get distracting, which is kind of strange. And like if I'm in a intense discussion on, on Discord or something, 
uh, and the headphones bothering me, like I'll pause the music for a second so I can think, but that's never really happened with the Ator because they're just so chill. So now I want to talk about uh, amp pairings with the Ator. I greatly prefer these headphones on a tube amp. And I tried them on the Valhalla 2 and the tube mode on the IFI iCAN Pro. And both times I much prefer these on tube uh, compared to solid state. These headphones change on tube uh, pretty much more than any other headphone I've tried. You know, people talk about the HD600 changing on tube a lot, but I really think the Otor really, really changes on tube. Uh, the biggest part of the change is in the bass. Where when you listen to these on solid state, it does have this the warm bass and it has very good thump. This headphone has really good dynamics because it's the, the Biodyna has nice, nice thump. But when you listen on a tube, the bass becomes even more echoey. Where when you listen on solid state, the bass is there. But when you listen on tube, the bass has this really strange like even more echoey reverby than it does on solid state. It's really interesting. And it just adds to that really fun, uh, cool sound that the Otor has. And especially for like even like classic pieces, like people mention tube amps for classic music or classic classic rock music, not classical. Uh, that just adds even, even more to the sound. So I greatly, greatly prefer these on tube. It just really adds into that whole a relaxed, chill, reverby, cool sound nature of the Otor. So as for comparisons, um, these are just two things I, I picked. Um, so this is not the most fair comparison because uh, these are closed backs and I don't typically compare closed backs to open backs because it's just it's not something you do. Um, the X100 is just another Biodyna headphone I had lying around. Uh, these have better impact than the Otor does, but uh, not as detailed, uh, brighter, and less recessed mids and warmer. But I don't know, that's just the only other wooden uh, Biodyna headphone I had. Uh, and then I brought back out HD800 because these new are in pretty similar uh, price category and the 800S is still there. Uh, these are wider sound stage, better imaging, much better detail, but very analytical, sterile, and serious sounding. A lot brighter. Uh, so... The Ator is just going for chill, 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 warmth, just chill, sit back, where these are just kind of very in-your-face analytical. So I don't know. That's just some things I thought of that were similar price point, similar driver type and uh, wood. But that's just kind of things that I was going to compare to here. So in conclusion, the ZMF Otor is a fantastic headphone. I really, really enjoy this one. And I hope I can, I can keep it in my, my permanent collection and I won't have to sell it for something else that's coming out that I'm really interested in. So if this headphone goes, it'll be because I want to purchase that. But I'm hoping this one will make it into my, my permanent collection because nothing else is chill like this. The HD650 has been my, my chill headphone for a, quite a while, but the Otor is now my, my go-to chill headphone. It's just such a unique sound, and I really, really love listening to it. It's just a, such a great headphone. Highly recommended. Great job, Zach, on making the, the Otor. I really like your headphones, and I really like the Otor. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the Otor review. Uh, links of where to buy these in the description, as well as the ears graphs, and uh, my Twitter, my contact email, and all other relevant information. I look forward to seeing you in the next review. Bye.